Peace. What is real peace? Just a while ago, um, we were watching a clip from the symptoms, symptoms, Simpsons and World of Peace. But that's not the peace I'm thinking of. It would be wonderful, but really, I couldn't see that happening before Jesus returns. I can sit and I can look out my window and experience the peace and the quiet as I look across at the park. It's lovely, restful, but that's not the peace I'm talking about. When I was a young mum and the kids were doing my head in, now and again someone would give me a break. The peace was amazing, but that's not the peace I'm talking about. The peace I'm talking about is godly peace. It blows any other example of peace just right out of the water. John 14 and verse 27 says, and this was Jesus talking, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Just before Jesus said, um, said this to, to his disciples, he just told them, that he was leaving a helper for them, and the Holy Spirit. So this peace he's leaving too must have something to do with the Holy Spirit. It must be supernatural. It must be a spiritual peace. So I thought I'd ponder over this kind of peace and look for a few examples in the Bible. And I've got three. Now there's loads more than three, but just three today. So examples of peace in troubled times. Well, Paul was in prison and it weren't like the prisons of today. There was no TV, no gym, no radio, no outdoor exercises or visitors, no decent grub. This was real hard punishment. He hadn't even done anything wrong. So Act 16, there's a portion that says that the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they'd been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a, a violent, <coughs> excuse me, earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't arm yourself, we're all here. That's peace. Beaten and chucked in jail with chains and singing. Who goes through all of that and then sings? That's the real peace. Job, in grief, in covered in sores, everything rotten that could have happened to Job did. You know the story. He lost his wife and his kids and his property and all his animals and his staff were all struck down. Everybody died except Job. And he's left sitting by himself in the hot sun with loads of sores on his body. And his friends curse God. So, you know, God couldn't, couldn't love you if he's done this to you sort of thing. Um, but not once did Job curse God or blamed God. Somewhere within him, there was that peace. And then there's Jesus in the wilderness. Um, he had to draw on God and what he knew to be true. He could have got right, Raji, 40 days in the hot sun with no food and water freely available. But he had this inner peace from his father that every time the enemy um, threw another temptation his way, 
he was able to just stay strong and draw on his father. That was real peace. Now, each of these examples show people in desperate situations, but something held them during those times, the peace of the Holy Spirit. Flipping rotten days come our way. Things can knock us off balance. COVID is just one thing, but we can have that inner peace when we hold on to God, when we trust him that whatever happens is with us and he's watching over us. Now, there's times when the, the enemy, when the devil will rob us of our peace, or at least he'll try. He'll do whatever he can to knock us down, to wind us up and to destroy the peace that we have in life. All around us um, can be noise and heartache. We might be in pain, short of money, struggling with one thing or another. But we can still have a peace that will help us through those times. Jesus promised to help us. He kept his promise. He promised to leave a peace with us that wasn't of this world. He kept his promise there too. We have to claim the promise for ourselves and hold on tight. The storms might come, but the peace can still be found in it. Sometimes we just have to accept the world and the situations around us for what they are but then look beyond them to God and to live in his peace. I really pray that each of us might know the peace that God gives, that in these days when, when there's plenty to struggle over, that even in those struggles, we might know that inner peace that just holds us firm and keeps us safe. <laughs>